Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. In this video, I want to take a look at an article I came across a couple weeks ago. The article uh, talks about plants and how they scream in pain uh, when you cut them, when they're in drought, etc. They, they scream in pain. Um, I'm going to cut the article in a minute, but I just want to say that this is nothing new. Um, I remember reading about this a long time ago, decades ago. This is just further research that confirms it. This is decades long research, there's no question about it. Plants scream in pain, they feel pain, they communicate that they feel pain, and they scream. So I just want to cut to this article real quick, and then I want to talk about the logic that applies to some of the belief systems and how the, they had, there's a twisted logic to a lot of belief systems, and I want to expound upon that because it's very important uh, that people don't put all of their baskets in one type of behavior. And I'll talk about that after the article. Let's cut to the article right now real quick. This article is on LiveScience.com. Headline reads, Plants Scream in the Face of Stress. The article was written by Nicoletta Lenice. And the uh, date of publication on their website is December 6, 2019. <clears throat> a new study suggests that plants that are stressed by drought or physical damage may emit ultrasonic screams. Unlike human screams, however, plant sounds are too high frequency for us to hear them, according to the research which is posted December 2nd. When researchers from Tel Aviv University in Israel placed microphones near stressed tomato and tobacco plants, the instruments picked up the crop's ultrasonic squeals. The recordings revealed that the different plant species made distinct sounds at varying rates depending on their stressor. Drought-stressed tomato plants emitted about 35 ultrasonic squeals per hour on average, while those with cut stems made about 25 squeals per hour. Drought-stressed tobacco plants let out about 11 screams per hour, and cut crops made about 15 sounds in the same amount of time. In comparison, the average number of sounds emitted by untouched plants fell below one per hour. Now, my goal here isn't to change anybody's behavior. If you're a vegan, be a vegan, do your thing. I want to use this as a, jumping, as a jumping off point to show the broken thinking and the lack of logic that goes into a lot of um, perceptions of reality and the way people think about things. So you have plants, they absolutely feel pain. They communicate it, they scream, you can't hear it, but if you have an ultrasound microphone it can pick up these, these screams of pain. Uh, in particular you cut the stem, ow, that hurts. You know, like chopping off a finger or chopping off an arm or a hand, whatever. That, that's painful for the plant, and it communicates that. Or at least attempts to communicate it. We can't hear it. A lot of vegans uh, or vegetarians use the, you know, fish don't have any feelings. That's why as a vegetarian or vegan, I can still eat fish. Or, or you know, vegans particularly would use, oh, plants have no feelings, so I can eat plants. No. They have feelings, and that's wrong. And as a matter of fact, not only they have feelings, but if that's your only reason for being a vegan, you need to find some better logic because then you are an absolute 100% psychopath. You think because this thing can't move, can't run away from you, that it's okay to, to kill it, put it in pain, and eat it. It's unfair. It can't run away. Well, where's, where, where's, where's the sense of fair play? Animals can run away. At least there's some type of, 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 of fair play in uh, here. Uh, there, there's some ethics involved. Uh, hunting, there's an ethic involved. Ultimately, uh, the hunter himself could be killed. I mean, there, there's an ethic involved in there. When you're trying to, using just eating plants, because they don't feel pain as, as your reasoning, that, that's, that's a false reasoning. In fact, 
You are a psychopath because the only reason you're eating it is because it's easy to hurt them. <laughs> That's what it amounts to. But this is another, this is a slight jumping off point as well to another subject that I think is important that isn't uh, properly debated uh, in the mainstream lying news media. Uh, like abortion, you know, you know, the same people who are filled with, who claim to be filled with compassion have no problems being vegans and killing these things or and putting them in pain because they can't move. Well, they, they, they still feel pain though, just like abortion. A, a, a fetus or a baby, depending on your perspective, in the womb can't run away. It, it is completely dependent on the mother and you know, uh, the willingness to slaughter that, that uh, fetus or baby or child, whatever you want to term it, uh, in the womb. Um, in my opinion, that is wrong. And it, it's connected in the sense that a human, a fully developed human, at least has the capacity to run away. Killing that human a human, a fully formed human in a fair fight, that's much more ethical, in my opinion, than aborting a child in the womb who has no ability to defend itself or get away. Um, I could get into abortion and uh, a little more, um, you know, I do believe it should be legal um, to a certain extent, uh, but only to the part, point where the, the fetus is able to feel pain and it has self-awareness, which means the first trimester. Uh, after the first trimester, I, I think there should be severe restrictions on it. That's my own personal opinion. Um, uh, that's my own personal legal opinion. In my personal opinion of the way I would act, uh, if I had the choice, is that, that that's, that's life upon conception. Uh, I would never abort a child willingly and knowingly. Um, and child support has made me homeless, but I would still be homeless rather than have my children slaughtered. Thanks for watching.